Damn, always those bloody aliens. Servus and welcome back to part 2 of the resurrection of the mighty Vobis high screen 386 tower. As you can hear an old retro system with a PC speaker is indeed quite awesome. But if a PC speaker is your only option, it might get a bit tedious over time. So the goal for today is improving the 386 with some handy upgrades. But first something completely different. Now for something completely different. As I told you in the last episode, I wanted to do a little bit of digital archaeology on this 30 year old hard drive. Well, nearly 40 years old, it's from 1994. So let's jump to the capture device. First things first, the hard drive is still working fine, at least for now, which is great. Most of the things on the disk are personal things, so I won't show them to you and delete them. There were also some remains of an IBM OS2 warp installation. So at one point this was a dual boot system, maybe quite fascinating. Sadly the OS2 installation is missing a lot of files and is anything but bootable. Some things is the usual Windows 3.11 stuff, like Solitaire, Word and you name it. It's just a plain Microsoft Windows 3.11. There were also some work-related programs, which might be worth a look. Especially if you want to know what cars Peugeot sold in 1990s Austria and which prices they had. So, <laughs> maybe many little of you will have interest, but anyhow. There is also a real treasure buried on this old magnetic disc. At least retro enthusiasts might consider it a treasure. Hidden beneath the C drive is a digital catalog from a computer retailer. Not very special you might think, but... Remember in the first part where I told you there were two major computer retailers in the early 90s in Austria? One was of course Vobis and the other one was Ascom. Right, the same ASCOM which would acquire Amiga after Commodore went bankrupt in 1994. The digital catalog on the hard disk, which was surely kickers to have something in this form back in the day, is from 1994. Sadly it is not fully working because the CD-ROM is missing, so you cannot access images, audio or video files. But what you can do is look around and configure the retro computer of your dreams from back in the day. Complete with prices in Deutschmark, yeah, <laughs> how great is that? This is something really fascinating from the past, where you can really dig into and take a trip down the memory lane. Pun intended, because memory was anything but cheap back in the day. If the program is still runnable after extracting, I will put the digital catalog on archive.org. But now let's get back to some real hardware stuff. Time for some upgrades. As I already said, I want more than just a PC speaker sound. So. A logical upgrade is a sound card, a Soundblaster Pro 2 from Creative Labs to be exact. For one, this is quite period correct and there is no need for drivers. Just set the jumpers on the card and add a line to your auto exec button and voila! Glorious Soundblaster Pro 2 sound, at least in theory. One other thing is the 387 coprocessor. Mainly because I had one and hey, <laughs> why not? Although 4 MB of RAM might be enough for a 386, more is always better, right? Right. Therefore I will install another 4 MB on 4 SIM modules for a total of whopping 8 MB of RAM. Oh yeah! Then there is the VGA card. It is not the fastest, but it works and has 512 KB. So far, so good. I will replace it anyhow with a Trident TVGA 8900C. The Trident is not essentially faster and I will have to replace a missing tantalum capacitor first, but 
It has 1 MB of VRAM and gives me options for more resolutions. And if there's no change at all, I can also put the other cut back into the system, but at least I have a working spare. Ok, let's cue in the right music and start the montage. Fine, everything is done now, but there is still the old hard drive in the machine. At the moment it works fine like a charm, but nobody knows for how long. That's why I will replace it with this handy dandy ST, in fact micro ST to IDE adapter. It will sit on this 3D printed bracket and will rest comfortably in the removable drive bay. In the future transferring files from and to the 386 will be a piece of cake. Perfect, everything is assembled and works flawlessly. Alright, this is now a real powerhouse and would have been back in the day. So what are we gonna do with it? Let's play some good old DOS games, a few of my favorites. Of course, this machine won't run any DOS game perfectly, especially the later ones, as we can see later in the video. For example, Wing Commander runs perfect on this machine. On my 486 TX4 it's quite tricky, because the machine is much too fast. But now, time for some monkeys.
Monkey Island, this is one of my absolute favorites. I love it. From the graphics, the sounds, the story, this is a game that really stood the tests of time. Arrakis, known as Doom. Land of Sand. Home of the Spice, Malone. The Spice controls the Empire. Whoever controls Doom controls the Spice. The Emperor has proposed a challenge to each of the houses. The house that produces the most Spice will control Doom. There are no set territories and no rules of engagement.
Ok, let's hear how Commander Keen compares against the PC speaker version. Of course, this system won't run Crisis, but can it run Doom? And uh, let's say, yes, <laughs> it can. Not perfect, but um, for 386, quite okay. I would have enjoyed it back in the day. you have it. A fully working and upgraded Vobis high screen 386 tower. Ready for many years to come. Hopefully. That's it for today. The resurrection of this blast from the past is now complete and I have to say I'm really happy how things turned out. From the accidental Big Bang to a fully working machine I really enjoyed this restoration. If you also liked what you saw, it would be fantastic if you give me a thumbs up or down if you didn't like it, or subscribe to my channel. Alright folks, thank you very much for watching, stay safe, stay foolish and see you in a new video here on my channel. Servus, cheers and see you soon.